Is it rolling, Bob? Is it rolling, Bob? Is it rolling, Bob? Hi there, everybody out there. This is Chris Gregory here again, and this is Bob Dylan, A Head Full of Ideas, Season 3 and Episode 12. Um, and this is about Dirge, which is a um, song from Planet Waves in 1974. Uh, it's called Dirge Searching for a Gem. The shocking immediacy and passionate cynicism of 1974's Dirge was correctly interpreted by many fans and commentators as a strong indication that the era of Bob Dylan, the family man, was coming to an end. This was particularly striking as it was released on Planet Waves, most of which consisted of much lighter songs about love or childhood. It's a one-off performance. The song was never included in any of Dylan's live sets. It seems therefore to encapsulate a particular moment in time as he struggles to emerge from several years of writing more relaxed, less challenging songs. The bitterness of its sentiment also anticipates the tone and style of Blood on the Tracks, which came out um, not so long after this. In many ways, Dirge is presented like one of Dylan's old protest songs. The six verses use a basic A-A-B-B -B rhyme scheme and a repeated regular rhythm. There are no choruses or refrains. The musical backdrop consists of a remarkable duet between Dylan's characteristically rhythmic stabbing piano and Robbie Robertson's deft and melodious Spanish-style acoustic guitar. At times, the two instruments seem to be playing separate tunes. This is particularly effective as the song deals with conflicting emotions. Despite the apparently doomy picture it paints, it also appears to offer considerable hope for the future. But the performance um, seems to signify an acceptance that, for an artist such as Dylan to fulfil his creative potential, inner conflicts cannot be ignored and emotional pain and struggles need to be confronted. A dirge is a traditional form of song which is performed at funerals to honour the dead. The Lake White Dirge from North East England, which was performed by folk groups of the 1960s and 70s, such as Pentangle, was one famous example. The eloquent sadness of the song makes it a kind of dirge or elegy for his period of domestic bliss and relative obscurity. Dylan's narrator appears at first to be addressing a woman he has had a relationship with. As with other songs in which he appears to be directing his love or his venom towards a particular woman, many commentators have tried to link this song to his memories of women he was associated with in the mid-60s. Uh, Susie Rotolo, of course, um, uh, Joan Baez, um, Edie Sedgwick or Nico. But no detailed historical or geographical context is given here. We learn almost nothing about this person in the song, or any actual details of a relationship. As in, like a rolling stone, Dylan appears to be using the convention of a personal address to articulate his feelings about a particular woman. But the expression of rage in the song strongly suggests that he has wider concerns about his relationship with fame and the public. Much of the narrator's bile seems to be directed not at the woman, but at himself. This is apparent in the first line of the song, which it is already shocking in its intensity and apparent emotional honesty. I hate myself for loving you, Dylan sings, and the weakness that it shows. Um, the next line, however, seems to be dismissing the lover as a superficial and destructive force. Yeah, you were just a painted face on a trip down suicide road, he sings. It's pretty harsh stuff, though, isn't it? Perhaps the narrator is addressing the woman in scathing terms, but then the narrative takes us back in time. We are uh, transported into a mysterious location and a definite denouement is presented to us. The stage was set, the lights went out all around the old hotel. I hate myself for loving you and I'm glad the curtain fell. On one level, this could be a metaphorical description of the end of a relationship. However, in the context of this particular moment of Dylan's career, the reference to the falling curtain seems to connect strongly with the fact that the song was written towards the end of an eight-year hiatus from touring. 
Thus it already seems that the lover being addressed is a personification of the corruption of the falseness of showbiz. Just a painted face. Such commentators have, um, sorry, some commentators have referred to the line about Suicide Road to suggest that the song is about the drugs that, in Sarah, his semi-autobiographical address to his wife written two years later, he tells her to, that he had taken the cure for. Ironically, he would sing that song on stage hidden behind white face paint. Perhaps the hotel referred to here is New York's Chelsea Hotel, Dylan's sometime residence in the mid-1960s, which is also referred to in Sarah. Thus it appears that this song has several targets at once. Dylan throws in elements of his own personal history and mythology in a song which gradually goes deeper and deeper into his own psyche. The lines, I hate that foolish game we played and the need that was expressed and the mercy that you showed to me, whoever would have guessed, strongly suggest that he's conducting an internal discourse with his own conscience. Despite the anger that's been shown so far, the narrator recognises the healing effect of the mercy being shown here. He has clearly not followed Suicide Road to its logical conclusion. Somehow, his own conscience has saved him. Yet he's clearly recalling a time in which his life was at a low ebb. In what follows, he gives us perhaps the song's most moving lines, which have an almost Blakeian tongue. I went out on Lower Broadway and felt that place within, that hollow place where martyrs weep and angels play with sin. Lower Broadway is an area of Nashville. Um, it's, it's, um, many people assume this is New York, but it's actually in Nashville, uh, near the Ryman Auditorium, the famous um, home, as they call it, of country music. The street has many honky-tonks and other music venues. This is a location which Dylan is very likely to have visited during any of his sessions in Nashville from 1966 to 70. Therefore, the martyrs and angels, uh, who are often characters in country songs, um, very distinctive country songs, it wasn't God who made Honky Tonk Angels, originally recorded in 1952 by Kitty Wells, uh, these songs certainly deal with the consequences of sin in a big way. Um, that's a big theme in country music, of course. Thus, Dylan may be giving some explanation for his country music period. Perhaps more importantly, though, here he refers to a hollow place within, which is presumably the source of his own creativity, as well as his inner pain. This is the pain he will soon need to confront in order to produce the great masterpiece, Blood on the Tracks. Dylan then appears to be addressing himself in his early protest phase. Heard your songs of freedom and man forever stripped, acting out his folly while his back is being whipped. The <clears throat> slave comparison is then made explicit as Dylan laments the parlour state of humanity that led him to write these songs. Like a slave in orbit, he's beaten till he's tame, all for a moment's glory. And it's a dirty, rotten shame. Uh, this is not a song that's constructed as carefully, I guess, as the songs on Blood on the Tracks. One, one almost thinks that he's going to just pour it out in, in, um, in one go. But there's genuine anger in his voice here. He appears to be inferring that his own political rage was beaten out of him. But he also acknowledges that the world that these songs of freedom were written about hasn't essentially changed. The fourth verse contains perhaps the crucial lines in the song. There are those who worship loneliness. I'm not one of them. Seems to suggest that his years of rural retreat were necessary, but will not be permanent. He's itching to get back into the fray, it seems. In this world of fiberglass, he sings, I'm searching for a gem. He's now challenging his inner self in an attempt to revive the depth of inspiration that he'd struggle with during those earlier years. Up to now, though, the crystal ball upon the wall hasn't shown me nothing yet. Uh, but he's clearly hoping that the magic will happen again. He feels he's fulfilled his bargain with those weeping angels. I've paid the price of solitude, he sings, but at least I'm out of debt. The narrator then spits out some more venom. Can't recall a useful thing that you ever did for me, except pat me on my back one time when I was on my knees. 
Again, pretty harsh stuff, isn't it? Now he appears to be addressing his inner demons again, although he could also be referring to the mass media, an entity for which uh, he has frequently expressed nothing but contempt. Certainly he seems angry at the way he's been treated. He describes a standoff between himself and this personification of an individual who he has been lambasting throughout the song. We stared into each other's eyes till one of us would break. No use to apologise. What difference would it make? Despite the pain he's been through, in the final verse he gives us a note of proud defiance, beginning with the most anti-establishment lines he's delivered for many years. And this is the kind of stuff that got the fans quite excited um, on um, Planet Waves, although you know, most people saw it as quite a patchy album. Um, so sing your praise of progress and of the doom machine. The naked truth is still taboo wherever it can be seen. In other words, the kinds of injustices and horrors that the younger Dylan had railed against are still there. But right now he's waiting for his crystal ball to provide him with the words he needs to point them out. So Dirge appears in a, in a very strange um, part of Dylan's career. You know, he's trying to uh, reclaim himself um, as, a, as a proper poet, I suppose. Um, but um, this is a song actually reflecting on that process. He ends on a fairly hopeful, upbeat note. Lady Luck, who shines on me, will tell you where I'm at. This is actually a passing reference to Luck Be A Lady, a Frank Sinatra standard. Um, Dylan's love of Frank Sinatra really goes back a long way when you start to look at it. Then he reiterates his opening statement with a new coda. I hate myself for loving you, he tells her again. But then he becomes more equivocal. But I should get over that. The song which uh, Dylan has displayed such anger, uh, in which he's displayed such anger and self-loathing, now ends on a more hopeful note. However, the tongue-in-cheek cynicism of I should get over that still conveys a degree of uncertainty. If the song is a dirge, it is announcing the death of one part of Dylan's career and is looking, hopefully, towards the future. Um, that's what a, a dirge was in the, uh, in the old days, in the, in the Middle Ages. It's a song um, that you sang at a funeral. Planet Waves is something of a patchy album, as we said, uh, which was rather disappointing for many fans who were hoping that, after what was, by the standards of those days, such a long hiatus between albums, um, in nearly four years actually, he would produce something with the depth, fire and bitter humour of his classic 65-66 period. Yet in Dirge, Wedding Song and a handful of the other tracks on the album, he showed that he was still capable of plumbing these depths. Soon he would be back on the road for a major tour. He would be hitting the folk clubs in Greenwich Village again and he would be producing albums of songs that stood comparison to his finest work. But within a year or two, his marriage and thus his settled domestic life had fallen apart. Dirge thus stands as a kind of elegy for that life and a testament to one of the uncomfortable truths of Dylan's entire life, that personal happiness and artistic fulfilment were for him rarely compatible and that's a very painful realization and we can hear it throughout this um, quite remarkable song but dirge demonstrates a renewed determination to find that elusive gem that somehow over the years he had lost um yeah so uh, check that out it's on the album um, uh, planet waves not one of dylan's best known songs I guess but um, it's very important really in his in his personal development um, relatively short episode today um, that's all we have for you for for now um, but I'll be back very very soon so see you then don't forget to like and subscribe um, and uh, any comments on this would be highly appreciated so bye bye is it rolling, Bob? Is it rolling, Bob? Is it rolling, Bob?